I guys, the psychology of it all with concerns to uh, our wonderful opportunity and visit uh, from a professional boxer that we were graciously ha that we graciously had with us for uh, 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 evening and a full day the next day and the night the day after the next day uh, so really we had a full day and a half with him um, they worked out three times yesterday uh, just sparred with the guy <clears throat> twice I believe uh, they had a total of about 16 rounds uh, they were one and a half minute rounds, so they were shorter rounds, but they were rounds that uh, the international uh, boxing would place a 14, 15 year old in those minute and a half rounds with a minute rest. So uh, everything happened that I was anticipating. Uh, I said in the beginning, I put Joe through the psychology of it too, and I'm so glad I did this because, and, and let me tell you guys what I did. It's a little different with he and I because he is my son and I'm his uh, daddy. Uh, but trainers should, or coaches should be doing these things as well. If you, uh, maybe you got a, a fighter at 135 and you got another he's a, a young amateur but he's real good and you're able to bring a, a, a good a good good high quality professional in at 135 I'd suggest you throw this psychology on, on the guy uh, your, your amateur the one you need to test, the one you need to really see what's going on here. Uh, with us, I, I knew, I can see a lot of things that younger guys can't see, and I, and I can see these things really good. Uh, of course, being an older guy and being the dad of Joe, there's some things I can't see. Uh, but I... I did the good thing here, uh, in my opinion, and it ends up it psychologically worked real good for Joe because he got broke down not only physically to a extent, but he got broke down psychologically. And these are this is exactly what we wanted to happen. And I went through the motions with Joe. I was. Uh, giving videos and and as my videos go is what I'm telling what I'm telling him as a 15 year old just turned 15 year old young boxer uh, I do these things in the hopes that maybe we can put something out that you can learn as a youngster uh, or as a, a, a trainer slash coach so and I apologize for all the background noise this is Columbia um, but I kept, I started out and I was like, we got a pro coming. He's going to tear Joe up. Uh, Joe's going to get school. And then, and then I flipped the script and I said, no, nah, he's going to walk. Joe's going to walk all over this guy, just like he walks all over everybody. And there was some back and forth there, right? I go back and forth with that. And I put the... Uh, indecision, uh, the uncertainty into the young boxer. You know, one minute you're great, you're gonna walk all over, nobody better than you. And the other minute, boy, you're gonna get out classed, you're gonna get out thunk, you're gonna get out performed, and go through these gambits here. And in my, this is what we used to do back in the 
60s and 70s, and it should be more of this stuff going on today. You don't coddle nobody. You can't do that. So anyway, on to uh, uh, what Gabriel assessed with Job. Uh, number one, he told Job, uh, if you would have kept your jab in my face, you would have threw me off my game because there's no way to deal with a, j a jab like you have. Uh, well, not that there's no way to deal with a jab like that, but he was like, this is the uh, strongest, heaviest jab that anybody's sunk in my face. And uh, that was a good thing. Uh, but he told Joe, had you, had you kept that in my face as heavy as that jab is, you would have threw me off my, my game and what I do and I, and, and I would have had to brought in my alternative, alternate universe into play. And he's like, boy, that's just excellent, man. You're a great kid. Uh, and we're going to go through the pros here first, and then we're going to go through, of course, the million and one things that he needs to work on. Um he said that Joe's body punches, uh, Joe caught him with a left hook to the, gave him a liver shot, and he said he almost stopped. He said, I come to a point right there, you had that jab in my face, and then a moment later, you got a right hook in my liver, and he was like, I was fixing to say, hold on, kid, hold on, hold, hold on. Uh, but he being the professional he is, he went on through it. He's like, now nah, I got a job to do here. We're going to assess this kid. And uh, I, so that was real good, too. He, he was like, boy, you ain't going to run up on a teenager that's got the strength of, of this boy. So we were elated to hear what we did here. Now drawbacks and then a little bit about this professional so you see where he's coming from from and the the high horse from which he sits that he should be sitting on with concerns to the professional guys um we've got uh, but here's some of the cons here we've got to uh Get more ring smarts, which only comes with experience. Uh, we got a drawback, uh, which Gabriel told Joe he has that drawback too, and that drawback is uh, there's nobody that can really test you anywhere in the vicinity of you. Uh, you have to bring somebody in. Uh, to get a good, good hard spar because there's no there's no testing for you, nobody that can push you to the limit uh, with concerns of sparring. So he's and he said, "Hey, that ain't a bad problem to have," and it's not. And I always say that too. The uh, another thing we got to work on, which I can't physically do very well by showing by example uh, pad work. I'm totally uncoordinated now. I, if you see me doing pad work, it's not a, a good thing to watch. Number one, you see me laboring like crazy and you, you see how uncoordinated that, that I have gotten over the years and decades. I'm um, getting old, folks, but, uh, and we got to work on footwork and we got to work on putting combinations together and being, being more calm, uh, in, in, as a portion of the package of ring generalship. Um, he literally was like, "Kid, you stick that jab in somebody's face, and you're gonna you're gonna beat any national 
uh, champion 10 pounds under you or 20 pounds above you every single time. Venezuela, Colombia, and Ecuador. So um, that was that was good news. That was that was good to hear. Uh, so we got a lot, and there's a lot more. I it could fill a two-hour video up here, uh, but very excited, glowing reviews for Joe at 15 years old, and I would. Uh, beg to remind you guys remember that he's just 15 um, we went up this is one thing I want to talk to you about and then we're going to talk about the, the professional and how good he is um, we went up our floor scale uh, that, that we have here in the house it's messed up so we went up to a drugstore that's right near here. And I believe that scale is not accurate either because it kept putting Joe at 167 and three quarters. Now, Joe has lost a boatload, well over 20 pounds. Uh, or I'm thinking within 20 pounds, 25 pounds. Uh, because Joe was sitting at 196 and 198 eight, eight months ago. But we've put Joe on more of a, uh, not a strict carnivore diet, but darn near close to it. Uh, and, w and when I say not a totally strict, it's because uh, Joe's still growing, so he, he's got to have extra nutrients and uh, things for growth and bone growth and this and that and the other So. He's getting some uh, milk products and uh, other dairy type stuff and uh, more vegetables. And he's getting, uh, you know, we're in South America, so he's getting avocado a lot uh, and some other good fruits that are just chock full of nutrients. And some of these fruits, I can't even, bodybuilders come here to buy one of the fruits and it tastes like hell. <laughs> But you mix it with milk and put a boatload of sugar in it. And Arnold Schwarzenegger and Mike Mansur and company and all these guys use this fruit, but can't. The name of the fruit escapes me. But he, we do that every once in a while as well. His mother will make that up for him. Uh, uh, and it's a, it, it, the fruit is a black fruit and. Uh, Maybe you can find it online. Maybe I can remember the name and put it down in a description box if I can remember to even fetch the name. Uh, so Joe has lost a lot of weight. However, I know factually that Gabriel uh, was dead on between 160 and a quarter to 160 and a half. So... Uh, dead on there so I, we know that and uh, Joe just was w way more massive looking and I'm thinking Joe I'm thinking that the 167 and three quarters was not correct and that Joe was more along the lines of uh, uh, 174 to 176 like he, he's normally over 176 because he's always uh, listed at a uh, he's in the juniors now so it's a junior heavyweight 176 or 174 I believe 174 176 can't remember that right now plus so he's always in the heavyweight so we got got a lot to work on but everything's looking very promising now on to Gabriel the professional that we were lucky enough to get up here for almost two full days and uh, Gabriel has the reputation in Venezuela Ecuador Peru and Colombia as the national champion destroyer and well why would you say that because he's he's just literally destroyed in the ring these national champions in his weight class from uh, even from back two years ago that I'm personally aware of at, at 154 on up to 160 and a half here 
uh, and nobody can give him any competition. He just he's he he's bad. This boy's bad. Let me tell you, he is something else. And uh, uh, so that's a little bit about him. Uh, we said that we misspoke because we said that he had nine years of experience, but this was a year and a half ago. So he's pushing on 11 years experience right now in both amateur and uh, the uh, professional ranks. And he's got over 20 pro fights and uh, that are listed. And he's got way more uh, money fights than that that are not listed. Uh, anywhere, I, I would suppose. He just said not listed. So, and uh, I don't, I have no idea how many amateur fights he had, but he was popping around up here in the whole north part of South America, uh, beating up everybody for years. So, great reputation. Great reputation. So, we are just fortunate and thankful to the Lord that we were able to get this caliber of guy in uh, to work with Joe. And there's a lot of things I, just as an old guy, can't do. But fortunately, uh, what we've done is uh, he spent several hours with Joe and Diego uh, beyond all the sparring that he did, uh, showing and videoing uh, pad work, uh, giving the examples for the footwork and uh, pivoting, which is more of a Cuban style of movement that he has. And uh, going to see what happens. And he's going to make himself just very available to anything we need in video and online and we'll try to get him here uh, while we're here uh, probably every two to three months bring him up for a few days or a week maybe next time we can, we can keep him for a whole week so uh, very fortunate uh, that you know we've been to a lot of gyms here and these trainers and these people that be about right here. And here's where Gabriel is. He's way up here. Here's where the elites would be here. You know, here. The, I mean, the elite trainers and coaches and, and, and fighters. And he's way up here. So, uh, he, you know, he said a lot, gave Joe a lot of information, a lot of help, and a lot of advice. And, a lot of pats on the back he gave Joe. He was like, wow, dude. Wow. You know. And he went, you know, just exited out a little while ago. And he saying the same thing everybody else says. Boy, when you feel that power, you know it. You feel it, you know it. And uh, uh, feeling his power and uh, in the third person right in front of him. And. Uh, that's a good thing, and that's something really only people in the combat sport community really how they they talk and they behave with one another, and uh, it's just a blessing. So we're we're just uh, although we got a million and one things to improve upon, and then above and beyond beyond that, a million and one more things to learn. Uh, we got to keep in mind there's more than one way to skin a cat, as I always say. And uh, uh, Joe's still finding what just works really, really good for him. And uh, uh, the trainer can't find that for you, but uh, we're, we're, we're getting there. And we know that Joe's got a hellacious uh, left on him, right? a bit in, a hook, in the form of a hook, a jab an uppercut, whatever. It's got a hell of a left, and uh, he can use it. So we got to improve upon that. And uh, Gabriel even went so far as to say, uh, 
that some of the toughest, strongest guys he had faced in the ring, that Joe's jab felt like their full-on right cross. And boy, what an honor to as a 15-year-old kid to be told something like that. What an honor. So I'll end this there. We're very happy. We're very elated. Uh, Joe got schooled. We're glad about it. Uh, everything's progressing and going good. Uh, I was able to get a lot of help because, folks, I mean, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm getting close to being his oldest son, and I can't move. And uh, really now with me, my strength is going too now. And uh, my coordination was going a long time before a lot of you was even born, probably. And uh, uh, now my strength, you know, the last thing to go is starting to really wane on me. But uh, glory be to God, my son's gaining strength as I lose it. See, glory be to the King of Kings. So. But we love all you guys. We're so thankful to everybody that really shows an interest in what Joe's doing. And uh, blessings to our Christian brothers and sisters and to everybody else. We love you. Uh, and we just wish, wish everybody happiness and good health and to be of good cheer. And thank you so much.